Welcome to the Bring Me to Life podcast. It's time to wake up and shine on. Hi guys, welcome back to the Bring Me to Life podcast. I'm super excited to be here today. We have Silamon, who is the originator of the Bring Me to Life podcast. How's Damn. it feel to be back? <laughs> well, it, uh, a lot of mixed emotions, but ultimately I am excited and I, and I feel like our voices need to be heard and I'm excited to get it out there because especially this summer I've had a really rough time you know I've gone through a lot of doubt a lot of uh like just um maybe not feeling good enough to do things and I I think a lot of people are feeling that way so I'm pushing through that and I'm coming out better so I'm excited yeah I'm excited too I think that this summer was really important for everybody in the spiritual community and the awakening community and the human community. I even know some animals that have been making some upgrades. It seems like everything (laughs) in the world is like upgrading right now. And, and in like the spiritual community, everyone's like manifestations and rising up is happening on like an ultimate level. But really it's like, I think we're claiming our power back in a different way. Um, I know I personally actually did a podcast on my podcast uh my podcast on your podcast yeah on the shine on with shannon podcast Spin about off. yeah claiming your power and how i thought it was really important that we claim our power back um you mentioned that you felt like you kind of like weren't worthy why do you think you felt like you weren't worthy to to, to be showing up well hmm, that's a that's a really great question and i think part of it is because i am a human and thoughts other people's thoughts, other people's energy does affect mine because that's how the world works. Definitely. It's, it's not just like our thoughts are just in our heads and that's it. If you if you start researching about the aura field and your energy field, then you begin to realize that your thoughts go out. And so when you're in contact with people, they even even if they're not intuitive, they can still feel that because it's affecting their field so i mean maybe part partly it is other people that i'm like getting affected by and i think also some of it has just been deep-seated doubt that i've that i've had for a long time maybe since i was a kid dealing with trauma of maybe not feeling good enough for my parents because i got left a lot or because i didn't feel like i was heard as a kid a lot Mm. and even though i felt like i had fully healed from that I don't, I think this is kind of coming up because I haven't fully healed from that. And one thing that I remember Gabby Bernstein talking about is even if you feel like you've surrendered everything, surrender more. Yeah, I love that because it's important to remember that this is like a constant process and that you're going to continue healing from it. That's like part of what your existence here in the physical world as a human is. Uh, I think it's interesting because I feel like you and I bounce back and forth with our feeling like we're on top of our game so we like really balance each other out you'll see a couple seasons where you're like taking (laughs) charge and doing the interviews Mm -hmm. and then you kind of take a step back and like recharge your energy and then i hop in and it's really nice to have like a a partner that can can help balance that when you're not feeling at top of your game but i think uh going back to what you said about this summer i feel like we both like just seeing the growth in you inspired growth in me um seeing the growth in our friends so many people that have been involved with bring me to life over the years it's been powerful really seeing them kind of bounce back too i think we all went through this like intense portal of not knowing what our path was um and even with the podcast I, I remember from the very beginning i was really adamant about making it super professional everything had to be um super branded we had to be seen as like the the top dogs in our field and i i think that that was putting like a lot of pressure on mm-hmm. what we were doing Definitely. so i know i've personally like kind of take a, taken a step back and like you said um you just kind of have to give in to spirit and i'm realizing that it's really important for us as as spiritual leaders that we've kind of been pushed into these roles like i didn't expect to be a spiritual leader but here i am and here you are and it's like Mm -hmm. it's more important to be authentic than to to sugarcoat it and we want you guys to know that we're all kind of like going through this journey together and nobody knows everything and if Mm -hmm. they think they do then they're probably not letting their humbleness out they're they're letting their ego take over yeah i 
I um I have this uh business coach basically who um Ashley who I, I learn a lot of stuff from and one of her posts recently was about not comparing yourself to others. Mm. And I think that's huge because, you know, um we get inspired by a lot of people and with our podcast, like we wanted we got inspired by other podcasts and we wanted to be as big as them and like reach that many people and whatnot. But um I'm realizing it's more about having your own experience, going at your own pace. Um, I saw a really cute picture of a snail and it said, I'm going at my own pace and that's okay. And I think that's one thing that I want to integrate more is just knowing that we're, we're all on our own paces. We're all going and doing the things that feels right to us and to stop comparing yourself to others because it really, I think, affects a lot of the quality and it just... You, it, you become inauthentic when you try mm-hmm. to compare yourself to somebody. Yeah, not only that, but like, not only should you not compare yourself to others, but don't judge their journey. Just because they come off a certain way or are able to express themselves in a different way. Maybe you want to be an author and you haven't yet published a book and your favorite author or somebody that you know that has been kind of like in the same process with you has released several books and it makes you feel angry and you think oh they didn't put their all into those books they're just releasing whatever they can to get the numbers but you don't know their journey you don't have to like compare your writing style to their writing style so not only not compare yourself but not put them down because they got a little further Mm -hmm. a little quicker Mm -hmm. you don't know how hard they worked or um, a lot of times people are like oh they must have known somebody to get that far and it's really like the power of belief Mm -hmm. too I think like Mm -hmm. believing that you deserve that um, once I realized that I, I believed that I deserved a new car, for example, the the new car appeared after. I mean, I had to take effort and make steps um, towards it, Definitely. but I wouldn't have done that until I believed I was worthy. Mm-hmm. And then also when you finally let go. Yep. That, I think that's the part of the manifestation process I've been really kind of <laughs> stuck on and i think we all get part of it yeah. dude i think we all get stuck on that like the the secret told us all to like visualize ourselves in this lifestyle that we want and to just feel like we're already there but then like the piece that's missing is that you got to let go of that so mm-hmm. first of all you got to put yourself in a situation feeling something you've probably never felt before like the last time i got a new car was like 10 years ago and i was basically just getting my license and like i knew i deserved it because i was getting my license and whatnot but now in like my 20s i'm like oh i need to save all this money up i gotta work really hard to feel worthy like i deserved it when really i just had to accept i mean i had to work really hard yeah but i had to like (laughs) accept that I deserved it. Otherwise, I would have just kept fighting it. My energy wouldn't have allowed it to to manifest into my life. The same with a partner. Like when you appeared, I had it. I think that that's where the letting go part came in. So um, the same with the car. Like I let go of the fact like, okay, I don't need this exact car. If I'll take whatever can come and I'll just make life work. And then the exact one I wanted came. Mm -hmm. Now with a partner, I went through a, a, a phase where I was like, I just went through this terrible relationship. I don't need a partner. I just need a friend. And I'm just going to be single for a while. And I let go of the need to Mm -hmm. have a partner, the wanting of like having that commitment. And as soon as I let go of it, like within a couple of weeks, you appeared. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. it was like I I was able to let go because I was willing to please myself and Mm -hmm. show up for myself and knew that I deserved that time. And I wasn't obsessed with it. So many people I know are like, man, I want this dream partner. Mm -hmm. I've been like making this vision board and I make lists and I dream about them and I know what it would feel like to be with (laughs) them. But it's like, But what have you done for yourself? Like, what did you do to know that you're, like, worthy of that and that you don't need that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it took me a long time to get over, uh, like, a really bad relationship. And it was years before I actually, like, was in a committed relationship, as I call it. And before I met you, I wasn't looking for a partner. I basically gave up Mm -hmm. uh, looking for a partner. I was like, I don't fucking need that. I was like getting authentic here we're dropping our words (laughs) uh i i what i started to do before i came here is i began to call for a mentor basically like a teacher and i was like okay i'm going to i'm going to manifest this adventure to find a teacher who's going to help me a lot in this life there was no romantic anything involved with that 
I feel like that's kind of what I was calling into, and I was just like, I just want a friend that like doesn't think I'm crazy. Right. <laughs> like I just wanted someone I could talk spirituality with and wouldn't say, Oh, your crystals don't work. Oh, you don't talk to dead people. Aliens, what? You're nuts. Like <laughs> I was so sick of everyone around me just thinking I was crazy. <laughs> well, like in my in my world that was that was normal. Um, <laughs> and I wasn't worried about that. What I wanted was a mentor who could like teach me and help me evolve a lot. And I and I thought I found somebody. And she invited me to the Root Wire Festival, and I was like, "Sweet, so I'm going to go there, um, and then we're going to, then we're going to, uh, sh- I'm going to go lo- live with her, and she's going to teach me all this stuff while I live there." <laughs> and then I got here, and it turned out that mentor wasn't. Maybe it was like she was meant to be that for that space, like a catalyst. For yeah, me. but then after that, like when I came here to meet her, I actually met you. And after the festival was over and it was time to go our separate ways, like my my spirit guides were very adamant about staying here because it seemed like you had a lot to teach me about business and life and commitment and all that kind of stuff. So, Which I think is funny, too, because I'm actually younger than you. And so many people think that their teachers and their mentors have to be this like older, wiser right. being. Like I was imagining like a wizard. <laughs> I'm your wizard, Harry. <laughs> and, and I think that would have been definitely cool to have that. But I get I get way better stuff. Like you could be my mentor, you could be my lover, you could be my friend, like we could be travel buddies. We get to do all these great things together. So it's definitely worked out a lot better. One thing that Sarah Hall says is after your prayer or your request, if you make a request or you write something down, always, always, always at the very end of it, say that or something better mm. because you leave it up to the universe or whatever higher power you believe in to not only give you what you ask for, but if there's something better for you, then they'll give you that. And I think that's great because it's obviously worked out a lot for me. So. Yeah, uh, I love Sarah Hall. Shout out to Sarah Hall. If you don't know, Sarah Hall is actually on the Bring Me to Life Network. She Mm -hmm. has Through the Eyes of the Angels. She has Angel Hours. She does angel readings. has amazing advice, amazing topics. You should check her out. Um, But the Bring Me to Life Network. So though the Bring Me to Life podcast has been a little bit slower in this last year or so the bring me to life network is actually like really grown mm-hmm. um it, it we're working on more consistency summer we're realizing is a, um just such a busy time for everybody mm. we're really excited for fall being more of the like recording content season sarah though sarah's been on point she she mm-hmm. like barely ever misses a a scheduled episode Absolutely, like yeah through the eyes of the angels check it out We're but also right there yeah check out the rest of the the bring me to life network too we have um breezy who i have a spinoff with called awakening with the girls and she has her own that's golden guy and adventure uh, i've recently done the shine on with shannon i did a couple episodes i wasn't thrilled with it so now i've revamped it really excited about the revamp um for a while CeeLo and Ashton had a spinoff which still has great content it's not yeah. as active but you should still listen to it that was like a lot of fun. people ask us all the time like where do you where do you go to listen to spiritual content and um within a humble way we say go to bring me to life network like check out other than just the podcast here and i think part of the reason the bring me to life podcast slowed down was because um for a while we really focused on interviewing other people i think that might have also been because we weren't um we didn't feel as empowered to share our own voice and we were still kind of processing our own healing and stories for a while and we were learning from other people we still definitely plan on interviewing other people but i'm really excited Mm -hmm. and i I think we're going to do more of these like conversations between us Mm -hmm. yeah because this is kind of like how i began podcasting was basically just going into a room hitting record and like letting whatever came out come out and that's it's very therapeutic and very healing. And that's how I got into podcasting. And you know, I stopped for a long time until I got here. And then you were all about it. And I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I like it. It took me a while to get used to this microphone. As much as I love to talk, you'd think I would have been instantly <laughs> into the microphone. But I was very yeah. hesitant for a while. <laughs> yeah, you got to get used to your voice. If you If you don't know, your voice sounds different on recording Which than so it does in your head me. so weird to me <laughs> someone once told me it was because like something with your bones make it sound deeper yeah i obviously sound way louder all the time than i do in my head too so that's that's an interesting concept for me 
Yeah, it took Shannon a long time. She, I would try to work on episodes after we recorded them, and she's like, turn it stop, off. I can't stop. hear my voice. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I'm sorry. I got to fucking do this. Yeah, so that's that's our little motivation that if you have a project that you, you really want to do, well, maybe you want to do your own podcast. Maybe you want to do your own, like, getting on Facebook Live and sharing your 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 voice. I, I highly suggest you do it. Uh, looking back at a couple of episodes, we did uh, webinars like back in 2014, 2015, and just like looking at my energy then compared to now, I can see how much I've grown. Um, and it, it, it's been a great process and it's been healing to mm. just show up here with all of you that are willing to listen to us babble <laughs> <laughs> and like just express it because so many people come back to me and leave me a comment. This is this is a reminder for you to leave us a comment and like let us know how our words impacted them or made them realize that they weren't alone in this situation. And I think that's really why we like restarted Bring Me to Life the way that we did um, all those years ago was to to show people that as they're waking up. And for me, what waking up means is like allowing yourself to realize that most of the programming that you've had your entire existence isn't like the only truth that you can create your own truth and your own spirituality and it's not wrong like Mm -hmm. my view and your view are not the same and we still get together and we can talk spirituality for hours Mm -hmm. but it's because we hold space for each other to grow and to shift that reality like my reality four years ago is way different than what my spiritual connection is now and i'm sure i'll listen to this in five years and be like wow i've really changed from that too Mm -hmm. it's it's part of that evolution Mm -hmm. definitely and i i think that's part of like what kind of bring me to life is evolving into is uh more of a community and just um like a space for people to come and express themselves and their spirituality regardless of if it's you know different than anybody else Mm -hmm. i think that's great i think it's it's important to have an open mind and an open heart and to allow people to have their own experience, to allow people to have their own spirituality because it's important, because it it gives more to God. And I think in my perspective, and this is something that I spent lifetimes like trying to teach, is that illusion or separation is an illusion. Um, we're not separate from each other. We're not separate from God or the universe, whatever you want to call it. And so being able to come to this earth to feel like we are separate, I think it gives us a whole new perspective and we can we can have individual lives that feed into the collective consciousness, mm. meaning that because God is omnipotent, there's an infinite amount of lifetimes that that are experienced and my unique experience gets added to to the the collective and your unique experience gets added to the collective can you explain what the collective means for someone who has no idea what the collective consciousness means at least from your point of view in my point of view the collective consciousness is just like a basically like a stirring pot mm-hmm. of all of our lives and experiences mm-hmm. and it's some people call it the Akashic records. I was going to say, is it the same as what people consider the Akashic records? I think so. I think that they are the same. I'd agree. I, I think sometimes people call it like Christ consciousness too. And mm-hmm. it's like allowing yourself to be one with all or like, yeah, one with all that. And like allowing yourself to realize that you are as powerful as the being that is represented as Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause you know, Jesus was given this almighty power of the son of God, but what people forget is that we're all the children of God so that all of our experiences feed into that consciousness. So if, if you, if you want to have like an image for those who, who are visual people, Mm -hmm. you can think of the collective consciousness, like a giant brain and Mm -hmm. all of us individual people are like the, um, the synapses or the electrons or electrodes or whatever that, that travel between the different spaces. Um, and if you look at it, like our bodies are so similar to the the galaxies, mm-hmm. to the universe. Dude, I just saw a picture of my eye and it looked like a freaking galaxy. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, so you can like see in the universe, there's all these strands of, it basically looks like a giant brain. If you look did. at a it giant picture like of the a, universe. A giant, a giant brain. They took like a fancy picture, you know, they charge you more to get this super detailed picture of your eye and when they go up close into it it looks like a 
a galaxy and a brain. Yeah, how mm. my eye looks like a brain, I don't know, but it did. <laughs> it looked very mystical, and I was mm-hmm. like, "That's in my body." Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you think in terms of the collective consciousness, you're looking at the big picture, and our individual lives are basically just that zoomed in so much that you can see the individual pieces moving. And that's kind of what our lives are like. Um, and a lot of people can can go through life without knowing what it's like to, to be connected to the consciousness, the collective consciousness, to be connected to everything else. And that's, you know, part of what makes this life so great mm-hmm. is that you can experience what it's like to be alone or to be separate from things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's why we decide to keep coming back and like i I firmly believe in reincarnation some people might not um i've seen flashes of past lives and Mm -hmm. that's where i'm like just now accepting that this is this is my reality and like for a while i thought people might think i was crazy if i talked about those things but i'm realizing more and more that it's it's like it's almost like sex and now it's like taboo to talk about but like everyone experiences (laughs) it and nobody wants to talk about it and we're like why this stuff's great to talk about like we just need to talk about these things so that we can evolve more Mm -hmm. but there's like this higher power that's like oh that's not happening because if Mm -hmm. you realize that's happening you guys are going to evolve right out of my power and Mm -hmm. i can't control you anymore Mm -hmm. so i'm kind of past that i'm past that whole Mm -hmm. thing but going back to what you were saying is i think that's why we reincarnate we reincarnate to have the physical experience as a solo being so that we can bring back that love and connection when we become one with energy Mm -hmm. And that's where I, I also dive into my, my connection to talking to spirit and dead people and how they don't die. They go into energy. That's a podcast for a different day, but like Mm -hmm. it, it goes back into the thought of they become part of the collective consciousness. Mm. And when people are asking me, they're like, Oh, does my loved one feel the pain anymore? No, they don't feel pain. They feel love because they've transferred over into collective consciousness and they're just channeling love. And they realize that they only became a physical being to witness that pain so that they didn't have Mm. to like keep thinking about it in the, forever heavens yeah i mean being able to have this experience i think will enrich being connected a lot more so like if you if you feel pain if you have trauma and you go through it and then you come back out on the other end then you know how much how how great it feels to be joyful. So somebody who feels joy all the time doesn't experience anything else. That's their normal. Mm-hmm. They don't they don't know that it's so good because it's mm-hmm. just like them. So being able to have but when they hit rock bottom, they really hit rock bottom. Right when they hit rock bottom, then they're like, oh, this is fucked up. Right. And then they go back to the joy and they're like, oh, now I can appreciate uh-huh. this so much more because I know what it's like to not feel joy. Yeah. My my dad didn't teach me too many like positive things. But one positive thing that I remember him saying a lot is sometimes you got to hit rock bottom to shoot back to the top. And he would mm-hmm. always like make this motion like an arrow. Maybe that's why I want to be an archer and get into mm-hmm. archery because he would pull it back and he would say like before that arrow can fly and hit its target which is basically joy, it has to go as far back as it can be pulled. It has to like hit the rock bottom so that, like you said, when you feel that joy, when you, when you find, even if it's just not even like the most utmost joy, I don't even know that's the word, um, Mm -hmm. but like the, the, the most powerful joy you could feel just Mm -hmm. any joy, like the fact that you have a family that smiles at you and doesn't like hate your existence. Like (laughs) that's a joy for some people and things like that. Like you have to understand pain to really, appreciate joy Mm -hmm. yeah and and recently we went to michigan and had a really amazing like uh fall equinox ceremony i loved it with our friend melissa and her and her crew and earth cadence yoga check her out yeah she's she's awesome and uh one of her friends marjorie gave everyone a card and she gave me the eagle card Mm. and she was saying that and the card basically said what i've been experiencing is I'm going through a lot of turbulent times because it's going to make me a lot more strong, a lot more resilient. Turbulence, that's a great word. <laughs> yeah. Because if you've flown on a plane you, and you know what tur- turbulence is, it's it gets rocky, it gets scary. I've still never been on a plane, but I can understand that 
that expression for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. <laughs> Turbulent times. Um, oh man, it's been a wild year. I yeah. think that has something to do with our <laughs> our disappearance for a while. This time last year, we were not in a place to be recording. So I am happy to be <laughs> back and empowered and feeling joy again. We definitely hit some of our rock bottom. Absolutely. Yes. But it's making us a lot more strong Definitely. and a lot more resilient to to do the things that we want to do without feeling like we want to give up. I agree. I think that's really important to, to, to not give up. There were so many times where I was just like, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to keep moving forward. I mean, even yesterday I couldn't find the hard drive and I was just ready to be done. <laughs> just like so frustrated with life. It's like the universe yeah. is working against me. Basically, Why? I basically gave up when I found that. I wasn't even looking. I gave up too. I wasn't even looking for the hard drive when it was found. I was looking for my friend's stuff and I pulled out a giant like wad of cords in my computer bag that I know I checked I multiple checked times. I checked computer bag. And all of a sudden, the hard drive was just like popped out. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. So it really took both of us giving up. Usually when you lose something, I can find it. When I lose something, you can find it. But the fact that we both wanted that back in our existence, we both had to give up caring about it. Mm. Because I was just ready to rebuild everything, even though I wanted to quit, not do anything. (laughs) I was like, because, I mean those of you that use external hard drives and you save your life on them, please back them up, back (laughs) up your important files and like things that you need to continue existing (laughs) in the ether world, whatever. Um, Put it in a box. Yeah. Oh man, put it on a leash (laughs) and (laughs) just like, anyway, but we both had to give up like, and be willing to just start over. And there it was where we both looked multiple times for two months. But Yeah. So I think this is this has covered a lot. This has been a, a an interesting podcast. I I like how we came back with this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I I really hope that we can have more chances to just kind of hang out and talk and um you know see what comes out. And I hope that everybody who's listening right now um, just feels all the good vibes that we're sending to them, and hopefully it love helps you somehow everywhere. in your life. Huh? <laughs> it's just love bullets everywhere. Love bullets. I'm gonna we're gonna. I saw a that musician noise. that did that, and it was just so funny. <laughs> just spewing them go. all over the audience. Spewing all of you with the love bullets right now. All of it. Um, yeah, I have a, a couple of topics I'm excited to, to chat with you on. <laughs> more chill <laughs> format. So I'm excited about that. Anybody that's listening and you made it this far. Are you Holy gonna forget- shit. Right. I know. Thanks. Thanks for listening to this babble. <laughs> um, we're grateful for you. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you want to hear us talk about. Like we show up at workshops all the time. People have questions and like we don't have enough time to dive into everybody's things in person. So this is your place to like rack our brains and dive into whatever it is you want to hear us babble about. So Mm. leave us a comment. Give us a subscribe. Let us know what platform you're listening into. I've been recently like really caring about that like do you, are you listening to me on itunes am i on spreaker stitcher some people are like what the heck is a stitcher <laughs> um, i recently found stitcher actually even though we were on it i never actually really used it i found a lot of like good content on there i'm excited yeah, it's about it basically the itunes for android nice well stitcher's been cool um if you want the instant like access spreaker's where to go because we that mm-hmm. is our platform spreaker is what's up dot com. yes so follow us there um you can get that on apples or itunes or any of that yeah I mean, apples or itunes you can download <laughs> it on any f- apples yeah, right. <laughs> apples <Okay>. and oranges <laughs> obviously i'd be ridiculous bananas today, guys, but I'm, Whatever I'm, you want. I'm feeling better. Any about kind it. of fruit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let us know where you're listening. Let us know what you want to hear us talk about and just show us some love because we just spewed love bullets all over you. Yeah. And if you don't if nobody gives us any ideas, um we got a lot of great ideas. We're just gonna babble and we welcome you into our world. There's so. there's a lot of great stuff I love to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a, hopefully we'll get you know, more bold and and adventurous i think that's what's happening i think we're just like we're ready to be bold in our own way (laughs) like look out for these bold people here (laughs) all right i think we've done enough Uh, i'm gonna tell everybody that i hope they (laughs) they stay awake and shine on always and we'll see you guys next time see you later For many of us, spirituality is just the the quest to find essence or true meaning and to really just connect with a higher consciousness. Connecting with your spirituality is very important. 
in this life. By becoming mindful of all of this, you can realize where you are and if that is leading you to where you want to go. Listen to the little simple things you can do. Those little simple things that are going to shift you vibrationally in such a way that will prepare you to become very intuitively minded and ready to step forward in the next part of your path. I hope you can feel the love that's inside you, that's inside me, that connects us. Thanks for shining on with us.